Hello and welcome back. We've made some really good progress so far setting up our HTML, our CSS, and our first little bit of JavaScript to evaluate whether the authenticated key or is authenticated key is set in the, the session storage. So all that foundational work is now set up. We can now begin focusing on the JavaScript code to do the actual integrations into our API. I'm looking forward to getting this done now. Let's just get straight to it. Where we left off in the last one in this profile.js, we left this debugger in there. So let's just remove that so that's not gonna cause uh, any issues while we are working on our code. And I'm going to close this profile.js for now and we will open up or create a new file in that front end folder. We're gonna call this register.js. And as we did previously, we'll do a quick test to see if we can get our register HTML file linked up with our JavaScript. And and at the bottom of the file, we'll use that script tag. We'll reference, use that source attribute to reference the tag and we'll just find that register.js file. I'm gonna hit save. And if we head on over to our register page and we inspect the console, You'll see we see testing there. So now we know that our HTML and our JavaScript is linked up together nicely. Go ahead and just delete that console log. And to get started, we're going to create a reference in our JavaScript to the, the, the register form in HTML. And if we just remind ourselves real quick, we have this HTML form element here. And so let's just create an ID for us that we can use. So we'll say register form hit save there and so now that we've got that id we can use some javascript we can say document dot get element by id and then this is just going to take in a string which will be a reference to the the id tag that we we put on there so that'll be register form and i'm just going to close the file explorer for now just to give us a bit more space and we're going to reference the add event listener onto this register form that we've just referenced from the DOM. We'll add an event listener for the submit event. And then we'll pass in a, a handler that we can make use of. And in this handler, this is where we're going to be making the request to our API. And that is going to be an asynchronous op operation. So we'll just mark this with the async keyword. And the next thing we need to do is in these ev event handler callbacks, we do get a reference to the event object that comes through. So the first thing we need to do is reference the event and then we wanna call this prevent default function or we'll invoke that function. And that's what that's gonna do, or what that means is uh, typically on these form HTML elements, you have this action where you can call a post and then reference a endpoint like right from the HTML here. We're not using this method in our front end we're going to be doing everything with Ajax request. And so we want to prevent the default value of this, this form that when, when the submit happens. The next step here is to create some, some bindings in the JavaScript between our HTML elements and our JavaScript so that we can actually get the value that is typed in, into these inputs. So the way we're going to set this up, we will create a variable here called first name. We're going to reference the document. We're going to get element by ID. And the ID that we set up for that first name is just first name in camel case. And once we have that, we can just reference the value. We've done a little bit of, of work here. Let's just put a debugger right behind this line that we've typed here. And let's just test that this is all working for now. So head on to your, your browser. And if you just hit this register button, you're gonna see the, the submit event is fired. And we, we do indeed hit our breakpoint here in on line six. And at this point, if I hover over first name, you'll see that there's actually an empty string in here and that's because we haven't passed anything in. So just to, to test that out, we can say, pass something in here, put in our, our name, John, and we will see we indeed are we getting that value from, from the input so that we we can see John is, is appearing there. So we can just kill that breakpoint. Now that we know that this is all working okay for now, let's just go ahead and speed up this process and we're going to copy and paste this a few times. And then, so we'll set this up for the uh, first name, last name, email and password. And just make sure that you, you update all the relevant IDs and then this should be getting all the values for each one of these items. And to verify that we can make use of our debugger again, hit the register endpoint. You can see that there's all empty strings for now. And so let's just put some values in here and actually fill in this form 
to see what we are getting. And so we'll do one, two, three, four. Uh, and as I'm typing this, I notice that there's no masking on this uh, password input. So we'll go inspect that in a moment. But for now, we can just hit our breakpoint. We see we've got John coming in, Smith in the last name, email looks good, password looks good for now. So that's all good. Let's take a look at our HTML. And I've got a typo here in the, the type that should be password. And if we try that again, should be working fine. And then you see now that that's linked up correctly, it'll mask the, the input for the password. If I hit register, we know that this is working. So that's looking all good. So now we've got a reference to all the values of the input. Let's do some very lightweight uh, client side validation to check if any of these values are empty, then let's send a message back to the user. So to do this, let's just take a look at our register form. Uh, we can see we used a class here. And just to kind of stay consistent with our form, let's change this to an ID rather. Once we've changed that to ID, then we can just reference the error message div. And then we can grab hold of that by the document.get element by ID. And then we can just reference that error message ID that we've put onto that div. Once we have access to that, we can then update the inner HTML with a message if there is a case of an error. And so let's do a check. And what we'll do is a series of conditional checks here on the, the first name, the last name, email and password. And if any of these values are false, so if they're empty strings or if they're undefined or anything like that, we want to set a message uh, onto this uh, error message div. And so we can say error message div dot inner HTML. And then we can just send a message back and say incomplete form, uh, something like all fields are required. Cool. And if that's the case we want to return and no further processing should happen at this stage so let's test this out in our browser make sure your changes are saved and we hit the register button we're going to hit our, our breakpoint if we step over our code you'll see because these are all empty here even if one of them is so at any point if this all conditional has a false value it's just going to enter this this block here you'll see at this stage if i step over it's meant to be assigning this error message to the inner html i see it's not happening and that's probably because of a little typo i've spotted here uh, just i've put a couple too many ends there so if i save that and run it again you'll see now that the case is we do see that now appearing on the dom and if i continue here it just the, that return statement ends the the whole flow of our javascript and so while we're here, let's just style this message so it looks a little bit better. So we can take a reference to the error message ID using the ID selector. And then we can just give this some type of red color and that'll be RGB 229 and we'll just do 999. In addition to that, let's do a font size. Let's give it 14 pixels. And then we'll just give some margin all around. And then the last thing is just to align that text and we want to do that center aligned and that should look a little bit better. So now that we have a way to access the values from the HTML form, doing a little bit of error handling at this stage, the next step is to actually implement a Ajax recall or a fetch request that we can make to our API. And so let's take a short break here in the next lesson, we'll pick that up and implement it and integrate it into our API. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.